Hello. Hello. Do you know if there's a link to the meeting notes for today? I believe it's actually usually just the the white paper. Oh. White paper mm -hmm. notes. I think that's where we we've essentially just been keeping all of that. Um, okay. But when Jonathan joins, I think he'll uh, be able to confirm. Awesome. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. This is Fessel. Hello. Hello. Hey, hello. Morning, afternoon, and evening all. How are we all doing? Good so far. Yeah. Good right. stuff. Hey, Emily, thank you for a lot of the uh, feedback you put in that document. That's really going to help that, I think. No problem. I wanted to make sure you guys were set up for success. I think we need a lot of help for success. Well, we've got a lot of good uh, good data getting into that uh, spreadsheet now. Um, sorry, that document now. Cool. So what I was going to suggest was kind of go through uh, top to bottom, because I think we've got a lot of feedback in it now, and figure out uh, and go through the scope and then work from that point down. Um, but certainly open to any other suggestions for the agenda. Uh, one, one bit I did want to pick out was, I don't know, if Cole, have you been able to add your chunk in, or is that still in development? Up oh, your mute. The software factory part. Yeah. Yeah, I, I need probably about four more hours on that. Got it. Okay. Is there? Um, I can have that done. Let me. I can have that done. Uh, probably mon Monday evening. I mean, I'm going to spend a bit more time over the weekend. Uh, I'd be happy yeah. to help, right? I mean, I, I dumped my uh, um, software factory piece in there with the recommendations, but um, we use that as a framework as such. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, my, uh, I mean, my family's out, out of town this weekend, so actually I'm going to be doing a lot of work, so I'll be able to get caught up on, on a lot of that stuff. Okay, cool. Okay. So uh, unless there's any other suggestions, I was going to go top to the bottom and pick out different... Um, Different commentary and uh, and take it from there. Makes sense or yeah. Yes. Someone got it up. Cool. All right. Um, 
I know most of the commentary comes from Emily, so I don't know if she yeah. she wants to direct her attention to something in particular or like I know you jumped in yesterday to, done a ton of work. Well, maybe past couple of days would be better representative of of the amount of work you've you've done there. So yeah. curious uh, what your takeaways are. Uh, you left some notes in, in Slack, but I wonder if you want to like raise that up. Yeah, so um, I went through the paper all the way down to the software factory because, I mean, you guys have a lot of stuff in there and I only had so many hours in the day. Um, but some themes that came out in the paper um, that I thought were important to highlight and draw attention to to make sure like as we're writing, um, we're being consistent. So one, one of the things that will end up happening is the paper is going to end up going to a community review. But prior to that, there's this single voice narrative pass that happens and anything that we can do to help um, make sure that the person that's doing that single voice narrative pass has an easier time of it is going to be super mm. beneficial and make things go much quicker. So any kind of consistency and format um, for like recommendations and best practices in particular, whether or not the recommendation is before the justification for why we're recommending that, um, whether or not we use terminology as that we recommend to this, or if we call it a best practice and this is what the best practice is, is so just trying to make sure that we have consistency across the mm. breadth of the document for what we're calling particular things. Um, the other part is some of the acronyms that are in use. So it's generally um, best practice to anytime you're introducing an acronym for the first time to spell it out, then shorten it later on and typically add that back into a glossary towards the end. It makes it a lot easier for reviewers that may be unfamiliar with the concepts. So for instance, um, one of the sections had a recommendation of SSH over PAT and I'm familiar with SSH, but not PAT. And I couldn't, couldn't Google anything on it. Um, so providing uh, that initial explanation or at least the acronym breakout is always beneficial. Uh, one of the other key things was there is a lot of supply chain chatter on the internet about like how people should be doing things, what we should be doing, how do we stop it from happening, lots of personal opinions on a lot of these things. Um, but if we're, pull, if we're looking at some of the content that's already available, such as things from NIST or from MITRE or other organizations, it's beneficial to refer to their, their documentation instead of pulling the content into ours. NIST, I know, has a really long time frame from when they start a draft to when they publish and any updates or changes that happen there. But if another solar winds were to happen and the recommendations within a document that we refer to were to change we want to ensure that our our document is standalone enough that we don't have to go in and rip out an entire section and rewrite it those were so, the main points uh, yeah that's no, that's awesome I, I i think that definitely we need that run through to make sure it's it, it conforms to the same sort of standard right at the minute we've got five or six people contributing with with totally different voices and, and we haven't got any standardization so so you definitely should do that as an editorial pass but that last point you you're referring to right so and actually you made a di different point about other material coming in but effectively as we're referencing other documents we've got the references right at the bottom but um are you, are you suggesting like take a cut from the particular document uh, paraphrase the the uh, reference document and then paste the link into it to the end? Is that the... Um, so it, it really depends on the content that you're working on. So there are a couple of areas where we introduce a concept that is reinforced by a separate document. Um, right. And that when, and if we're introducing a concept that has some reinforcement or like for more information, go here, sometimes those work better as footnotes so that the user doesn't lose track of where they are. If they see the footnote, they drop down to the section, read it, go back up and move on instead of scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the document. Um, in other cases where there is a particular um, content element from an external source where we really want to drive reinforcement home, we talk a little bit about why that thing is important. So like the NIST appendix, I think C is what it was, or appendix two, something like that. I, I, I made the reference in there um, that we talk a little bit about why that particular area is in, 
is important and how we expect the reader to use that or leverage that as they go through the document. Um, that way we're not copying and pasting or paraphrasing yeah. something. That makes sense. But what, one of the other things that uh, I think it might've been on the Slack channel that you pulled out, which I think is really uh, kind of poignant is, is now everyone's a fan of supply chain and there's, there's actually a, a reasonable amount of, you know, now it's cool. And there's lots of documents talking about it. Um, I think we need to differentiate, you know, what's our differentiator? What, why are we writing this document now? Everyone else has written stuff. I mean, I've got my view in that basically this is kind of a best practice guide uh, in reality, but but what are people's view? Why are we doing this? And why why hasn't the, the document from MITRE already cornered the market or the one from Atlantic Council? I think that's something we should probably discuss. I think it's because within the CNCF, we have a bunch of tools that we can recommend, right? And if you look at these mm. other documents, it's kind of wishy-washy about tooling. Um, so that, that might be part of it, right? Uh, maybe like a, some sort of a reference architecture or recommendation or gap analysis. I think we're uniquely positioned because of the community that we have to provide that holistic level of integration about how multiple CNCF projects can work together for organizations to solve this problem or at least reduce the level of impact were they to be attacked. So one of the conversations that I've had in the community and with other circles is that the landscape is massive. There's only a select amount of actual CNCF projects that are well and truly within the landscape and they're designed to work together, but understanding the nuances about how Intoto works how you would use Notary with Intoto or OPA or Spiffy Inspire or Parsec or add another cloud native project to that ever growing list of awesomeness. It's confusing for a lot of people. And when they're tasked by their organizational leadership to start a supply chain working group. So how do we fix our supply chain so we don't become another solar winds? They're looking to the community to provide a singular document that kind of yeah. executes like a playbook and whether or not yeah. that's a high level for as an architect that I would want to read through. And then I can uh, provide a reference implementation schema to my development team based off of that. So I have a foundational understanding, they have a foundational understanding, and they have an execution path to be successful. And that, that's the thing that I wanted to do whilst kicking this off right at the start, right, is that this is a best practices document that then maps directly to a best practices architecture with the CNCF tools, and then as a best practices implementation using those tools that you can take. And, that, and that's the bit. Although we kind of need those second and third bits to, to prove out to be truly useful, I think that's the differentiator for me because I just haven't seen that still, right? Um, I think we're starting to arrive at, at, I think we're starting to arrive who, to who our intended audience is for a good part. Those of us who are gathered here in this call are people who have time to think and question the status quo, mm. the question supply chain today. But the industry is at large, they often have to go with, well, what's seen as the accepted solution and they follow the docs and they don't question why. They don't question, is this the right tool? Is this the right framework? They just go with things. They're not questioning, well, are there better ways to do signing and verifications? Are there better ways to do this other things? So Emily, I know I know you you put an intended audience in there. Maybe we can like fill it in with a mm -hmm. straw man or like are these practitioners, are these operators, who these people are. The other thing, uh, well, I see a a a number of people joining the group for the first time. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone uh, feels like, well, they, they can come up to speed, uh, know what we're doing, and they can like find a place to insert themselves. There's, there's areas we're looking for help. Uh, Blake, good to see you again. Amazing to have you here. Blake is doing some really, really cool things uh, in, in his work. So good to have a practitioner uh, in the group. Tiffany Jordan. Tiffany is product manager for uh, a lot of the app delivery efforts over at VMware. Uh, Gary Yang, like Gary, you've been around the, the group for a little bit, been joining meetings uh, also at VMware. So welcome, 
welcome on board. So Andres, that's a good point. Do we have a kind of guidelines or North Star for new folks that are interested in doing this? One of the problems that we had with the Cloud Native Security white paper when we opened it up for community comment was um, either we didn't define our scope or our intent clearly enough that we had a lot mm -hmm. of feedback that we're trying to like shift what the focus of the paper were, was. Do we have something like that? No, I think that's a fair comment. We don't, right? And when we were trying to define that at the front, it was still a little vague. So I, I think maybe that is something we can add. There's, you know, this is the not only the scope, that's number one, but number two would be the, okay, if you want to contribute, this is how. So I think that would be beneficial. I'm going to find the readme that we have for the Cloud Native Security White Paper, which has a template for um, how we do the contributions as well as um, what the original intent was. And maybe that could be a good jumping mm. off point. Yeah, the, the one yep. guidance is perhaps we're, we're really biased towards action and getting things in writing. We don't want to like make this a a discussion forum. There, there, are, there are a lot of good discussions that have happened, but if you have, if you see something, you see it's not covered the right way, or like you feel certain ideas would be represented better, or there are some ideas that are, haven't been captured, write them down. Yeah, absolutely. And the way we usually, maybe we need some way actually within the paper to identify that. What we would do initially when we went through it is putting out placeholders for the sections that we're going to discuss. Maybe there's some, you know, we need to mark out some of the placeholders. If, you, if you're creating a completely new section, you know, okay, we've put it in bold, like text two, maybe, you know, somehow put a comment next, next to it, new section or such, and then fill it out maybe. Yeah. One of the things, one of the things we, we can, stopped We can doing. bring those in once, once they're like sort of fleshed out. And same yeah. with, if, if you see, an existing section that you feel the ideas can be elaborated further and you like that's what you feel inclined and have the most energy to work on jump right in there uh no one is really too attached to the words we've, we've put in place so if you feel you want to rewrite something or you want to add on to it uh that's for a game too right jonathan absolutely we need to figure out how we're going to do that actually that was one of the questions one of my questions in that if, if we are going to suggest rewriting, and I think when we get to the point where we're going to do some fairly heavy editorial across it, uh, we are going to need to change the document quite heavily, probably need some form of versioning. It'd be interesting to see how people collaborated on that with the other white paper. Um, um, so the way that it worked on the last one was we did an outline that everybody volunteered to like work a particular section and they either jotted down some mental notes that they had about what would go in there or they provided a complete text for that particular yep. section in quotes. That way we knew that that was kind of their final effort on it. And then once we got all of those done, we did a group review to ensure that like all the areas were covered, that the content that was provided was one in scope and addressed at the target audience. And then once we kind of had an agreement on, yes, this is good, this is going to be our starting point, it's a very rough draft, we kind of like snapshotted that and then moved the content into a separate document. And that's that's where we did our working editorial. We did a little bit more writing, um, moving and shifting things around that were redundant in other areas. That makes, I mean, that's kind of what we followed in that we started with those uh, high level straw man of, you know, these are the different sections. And then we separated out into, right, who's going to take that section? Cole took one, uh, Rich Julian took one, I think others you took one, I took one. I think we're probably beyond that at this point. We've got chunks of it filled in. Um, and I'm just trying to think at this point, adopt a section is probably gone unless you find a completely new section, in which case, just throw it straight in there, right? So um, there. There are a few sections that were either light on content oh. or um, they were missing. Right at the back of the document, I think is where we're, we're hurting a little bit. 
yeah, so that, that was one of them. I'm looking for where the other one is while my page finished load, loading. Do one of you want to share the screen? Uh, yes, so uh, this is Faisal. So there is one section called securing source code. That is the section. I mean, I, I do not know where, where we have defined the ownership of, of a section. But that is a section that uh, I would want to take kind of ownership for or work collaboratively with uh, somebody because I have a few ideas around it. I work days in, I mean, this is something that I do today. Yes. So I, I would want to, I mean, I'll provide the complete content and how to structure this thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So Richard, Ju Richard Julian took that one, but I definitely work with him to, to update it. Absolutely. And pile in there, right? I mean, maybe I take it back. If, if people think that there's still huge chunky sections that we um, that they could adopt, let's go for it. I don't think there's any reason to say no, right? So this section here is one that I think needed more work or more understanding about. Emily, I'm sorry, you're sharing, you're sharing the wrong screen. Oh, yeah. all right, hold on. Give me one second. Well, that's a nice paper too. <laughs> <laughs> see if i can get it right now it takes a lot of confidence to to share your entire desktop not just the window oh it's very ugly all right can you see it now there we go yeah yeah all yeah. right good um examining s bombs so that was one of the sections that was um seemed a little bit late and how it uh, mapped to the particular relevance of the paper. Um, from a flow perspective, there was also, and I think I had a comment to that effect. We also had like this trailing section for recore mm -hmm. traceability tracking dependencies, OWASP dependency tracker, which was covered higher up. Um, I moved a lot of things around to kind of like ease up on the flow a little bit. So they made a little bit more sense in the context of what it was we were discussing. Um, there was one other one. So the third party risk assessment, um, Vinod had a really good comment that, so I took that and I made a first pass at what recommendations would fall underneath of that. But I think that one also needs a little bit more attention so that we're deliberate in what it is that we're intending a reader to do or follow based off of that. Yeah. Uh, th thanks, Emily, for uh, yeah, explaining. I, I was a bit, I, I don't know how detailed we should go and make it too long. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely have a, a, a you know, read through of what you have suggested already, and uh, we will see how we can prioritize remaining items in that. Yeah. All right, so if you're taking that one, Fazal, you, you're going to work on the, the secure, um, the source code one with Rich Julian. Yeah, um, and uh, and if you guys want, I, I can explain that what I'm thinking about on this call as well, so that I bring everybody on board that, okay, why I want to structure information in a particular way. And then you guys can give me comments, right? Okay, this is wrong, this is right, so that we move for, I mean, because I want to establish the structure first for that section and then fill in all the details for securing source code. Uh, and of course, there. I'm not sure this is the right call for it or we need to establish another call or something like that. But yeah, at, at least that section is something that I want to go through today so that people can give comment that, okay. And then we'll, I'll try to fill up every detail and of course, uh, working with others as well so that we know. Faisal, thanks for, thanks for taking the initiative. I think it's, it's great if, if you take that on. If you could give us a quick rundown of what is it that you want to discuss, we can try to discuss this right here, right now, like yeah. for five minutes mm -hmm. or so, or if you feel like you want to start on the outline, we can, I don't know if we want to put people's names down to know like, oh, Faisal and Richard, and maybe someone else in this call wants to jump on that. And you want to have a breakout discussion with those people first and bring it, bring it back. Uh, Emily and I recently participated in writing a whole book over two weeks with other 15 people on a call, and we learned a few things on on what are, should be group discussions, what should be breakout discussions. But I think we like Emily. What what do you think we should I, do here? 
I think something like that might be beneficial. Um, in the white paper, we used the assignment feature of Google Docs to ensure that we knew who was working what section, or if we, um, as I, mean, I believe we did that on the book as well. Um, it made it a lot easier to understand who was working on a particular section if somebody was assigned or if it was orphaned, um, as well as if we came across a particular sentence, topic area, or paragraph that we wanted to have somebody's review on, just to kind of like sanity check, um, we used that assignment feature as well, and it made it a lot easier. All right, let's do that. So do we want to have folks go through um, on the empty, on the less complete areas and self-assign? I, I believe it's a comment with a plus in front of your name. Do you want to show that? Uh, let me see if I can try it. It's been a long time since I've done this. Uh, plus, oh, look at that. There, I can assign that one to me. So it's really um, a oh, comment okay. with an at or a plus sign. You can assign it to yourself. It's based off of uh, who you have in your address book. So pretty simple enough. And then when you're done, um, you can leave. Mark it as done. I think we should wait to mark it as done until we've gone through a review that way we yeah. know like who to who to ask questions to um, if we're reviewing it and have a have a question about a way something is worded or if we feel so, um, something could be enhanced. Makes sense. Faisal, do you want to self-assign yourself to your section? That'd be great. Uh, and before we move on, I don't know, like yep. Tiffany, uh, Blake, Marina, do you guys have, have thoughts or comments? Like, we don't want to like, this bulldozer, if we're, we're going to do this this way. And this does meet your expectations as you're coming into the call for the first time. Yeah. Um, no, I think that sounds good to me. I need to take a closer read through this before, you know, signing up for anything and kind of collect my own thoughts. Um, but Andres, I'll probably uh, reach out to you just because I'm new to, to joining sessions like this uh, with some of my initial feedback because I'm not too sure where to put it up front. <laughs> yeah, Maybe similarly, I'm just joining this for the first time. So I'm just trying to see where it can be useful. So um, I'll probably give it another read through, see which pieces I think I might be able to help with and then go from there. Marina, if, if I recall correctly, correctly, we met at KubeCon over dinner with some Tiago and Justin, and you were at NYU at the time. Also yeah, so yeah, I'm a NYU PhD student working on TUF and um, update security in general. So oh, excellent. Um, feel free to tag me on any update things if you want. If, um, yeah, let's go through and see, see where I can be helpful. <laughs> our, our, our work's done here then. We'll, we'll yeah. leave it all to you. The expert has showed up. I wouldn't say that, but yeah, happy to help where I can. <laughs> cool. Glad to have you on board. Uh, Blake? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, um, I'll give it a read through now that it's uh, getting a bit of, bigger picture of what the plan is for this white paper. Um, I guess maybe comments, drop them just in Google uh, google.comments or chat. I don't know what's the best. Yeah. I think I was, I was reading through the software factory part, which is. It's good, but it's, yeah, trying to figure out what it's saying. Um, I think if it's a question or a comment on the yeah. particular area, just yeah. highlight it and do it on the doc. If it's more a thematic uh, yeah. comment yeah. or highlight, put it in the channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah one of the things I was gonna bring up with software factory, I'll quickly mention it is um, one of the things we do is typically standardizing build processes when possible and also um, introducing more oversight to it and moving it out of individual developer control so you can't change your uh your your uh, code inside the repo to, to change your build process you have to go to something external so that's a topic that's not showing up here and i didn't know where to best mark that no it's a good one just yeah, I, 
I guess just add that in as a, yeah. as a, oh. a big comment, right? So it's like yeah. opinionated pipelines yeah. within the pipeline factory. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, you have it in secure pipeline, but it's more than just make a secure pipeline. It's standardize it, increase yeah. oversight of it. Yeah, I, I can. Limit. I can sidebar with you too on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Nice. Then Mike Lieberman, last time we we were on the call, you had some great ideas of well, all the other aspects around. Well, how how do you, in order to trust the machines that are building your software, you should have secured these things using mm. like defense in depth. I don't think that has quite been captured. Sure, I can put some notes in there. Right on. Very cool. I think we should make a link to the, at the top of that document to that readme as well for how to contribute. I know that it's for the cloud native security one. Maybe we copy it into something for this or, or at least point to it. Because reading through it, it makes a lot of sense, right? So I just added that link to the white paper readme. I wrote up the contributions for like assigning oh, yourself. And I also added a reviewing area um, to talk about the comments that way in case anybody had another question and come across it, um, they kind of know what it is to look for. Cool. So one of the bits we didn't really go through is the bits towards the bottom of the document that are still pretty orphaned. I just wondered if we could have a look at those and maybe you see, see if people were interested in adopting that. Like right at the back, just before the. The production of the software artifact distribution mechanisms, the actual signing of the software artifact. Okay, so this section that I'm scrolling through here looks like it's got some content still being worked um, and then established trust for the software factory. That's the one that Cole's currently working on that has like four more hours of time. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I'm working on that in the software factory. So if somebody okay. wants to take some of the establishing trust in the software factory, I'm, I'm happy to uh, give that up um, and work with them on that and dicing it up. I'll tag team with you. Okay, cool. And then verifiably reproducible builds. Yeah, I can work on that section. Okay, make sure that you guys are self-assigning. I don't have all of your email addresses yet. There you go. Um, production of software artifact and associated metadata SBOM. This one will likely need an introduction further up because we introduce SBOM and DBOMs further yeah. up within the paper. So if you're working on this one, I would recommend also tackling that one and making sure that it works within the flow. John, John Scott, I, I, he didn't make this from, but from Ion Channel. I invited him to the working group and he, he expressed some interest in that um, with his team. They've been doing a lot of work around there. So if I'm going to see if he, we can get him to do some of that. Yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah, I can yeah. also help John on that, yeah. And it would be great to get a review or input from Marina. Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to take a look at that. Um, distribution mechanism, including me metadata. What was the thought behind this? Because there's no um, text to help support what, what we mean. It would have been useful, right? I think this was when we were looking about how, uh, when we go through and we've collated the in toto data, how do we distribute that to other people further up the chain? Because the reality is this is for, and this goes back to the um, 
you know, the, the use cases, right? The reality is you're probably in the middle of the supply chain. You're not the, you're not the end user. So you need to send your data and your uh, metadata to the next person in the chain. How, how do we securely distribute that? And I think some of the ideas around recall maybe in that sort of area, um, but how? We can talk about you know what platform one's doing too for prior art with the Iron Bank. They're doing some of that distribution of metadata yeah, there. A little bit, um, yeah. So yeah. we put we put some so a lot of metadata that we, that's appropriate that's key value into container metadata, but we have not actually established something that's standardized or something general purpose like um, Intoto. And I'm, I'd be interested there. I want to say like OCI has good answers here, but OCI too, but. It, uh, it's not done yet and the integration isn't ready to my knowledge. Um, yeah, the other thing is I'm just is expected to um, also cover end users or just the middle people. Like there's I, there's your, your verifier, which I guess, I don't know who that's expected to be. Is that a, a build release person or is that end users? I think we need to do both, yeah. right? Yeah. But, I th but I think I think the reality is, yeah. I think we need to do both. Yeah, there's about I, three. There's people in the middle. There's a release approver, if you will. And then there's end users, I think. So that's actually a good question. And this is something that I struggled with throughout the document was that we had the raw suppliers, we have the yes. software producers, and then we have the software consumers. And I started that lexicon earlier up. I didn't add the software consumers, yeah. but ultimately if we're talking about particular areas, it might be good to highlight which persona we're referring to for a particular thing, if it is one. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, software producers, I think, doesn't really make sense, but also some frequently, I think, individual like pipeline stages, sub subcomponents of it are effectively a... a for this... And then they may just, look, go ahead. I'm sorry, I don't want to, I thought you were done. Uh, I'm, uh, let you finish I'm your trying, to, trying to figure out how to explain it better. Go ahead. Uh, for distribution of uh, metadata, I think there's two things we need to concern ourselves with, right? right? The actual metadata and then the, the signatures of the hashes of the metadata, right? So we need that transparency and the actual metadata. I think those are two mm. separate things. It's kind of what I'm, I'm starting to realize after talking to a bunch of people. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that, yeah, some of the notary v2 work might actually be relevant here as well, because talking about how that's, to distribute, yeah, things on registries. That's exactly um, what I was thinking when I mentioned OC, uh, OCI. Yeah. yeah. The, the OCI work with notary too is how to stick notary signature data into OCI packages. And I think it's very general purpose. I'm loosely tracking some issues somewhere. Do you have any reference material on the notary v2 work? Uh, any, can you I link some that? Some random there? GitHub issue in my inbox. <laughs> okay. If you someone else has better info, please let me know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can post a couple of links. It's it's kind of in a few different places right now. Cool. Cool. <laughs> okay. I, I forget was it Cameron or someone else in the six security call had started talking about treating metadata as data. And maybe that's a recommendation to make here. It's actually not a bad point. You can do a lot with metadata. Yeah. You're about to say, Emily. I, I was thinking that there's a lot of information that you can gather out of metadata um, such as not only source and destination, but also the absence of information within the metadata that could be beneficial for a potential attacker. Mm. Um, one of the practical challenges I think I've run into over and over is when hashing happens of turning something into an idea digest. Um, is your metadata the inside or the outside of that signature, if you will? In other words, like a Docker digest effectively includes all of its labels um, because they're inside the manifest of Docker images, which means you can't change your metadata post signature without invalidating things. Um, I th I think things are with one of the many improvements to the notary v2 OCI stuff that after building an artifact, you can add additional metadata to it on the outside. 
it's just a practical detail, but it's as you consider tools, it's one of the many problems I've frequently run into. If that made sense. Okay, so do we have enough to move on from the distribution mechanism? Like somebody volunteered to tackle this? We need to know, and it definitely, I, I'm not close enough to that. I mean, I'd, I'd like to dive um, into it. It's definitely on my list, yeah, but. I did hear just volunteered in the chat. Okay. Please make sure that you all are self assigning. Blake, and if, if you, you don't have to assign to this one, but if we could get the thoughts you just expressed in writing, I think it'll be easier for, for people to digest and, and form the yeah. opinions. Around. Yeah. It's mostly a difficulty of actually selecting tools, understanding their limitations. Yeah. Sure. That's right. Awesome. So, shining software artifacts. in the context of supply chain. Don't everybody jump at once. Hey, and, and folks, if, if you're not an expert in one area, uh, a lot of what's really needed here is like asking the questions of what should the text answer here. So mm -hmm. if you don't know about signing software artifacts, but have questions around how should software artifacts be signed and questions that like this following that thought process, that would be really beneficial here. And then as you disengage from that section, someone else can take ownership, start to fill those out. That's gonna help us accelerate a lot of the work. Yeah, a good reference here might be the Cloud Native Security White Paper. We do have some discussion content on software artifact signing and how important it is. So good. No, no, Blake, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I keep, I'm really bad at talking over people. Um, sorry, uh, I was going to mention is, yeah, software artifacts. Like, this generally probably looks like standard industry code signing, I think is my expectation of our output. This is signing of artifacts delivered to users. That's one thing I want to highlight. This is not sign, or maybe it is. You, there, you, have a, you can distinguish between artifacts produced in the middle of your pipeline and your final artifact at the end. And I think that may be worth mentioning here. Um, you're, you have automated signatures for sure inside your system. Uh, that's what Intoto is doing. Uh, but you might have some different kind of signature at the very end, like say notary, for your, your signature delivered to an end user. So it may be worth mentioning that these are not always the same. One of the things I'm very confused by is how do I actually connect meaningfully cryptographically this, those two um, chains of trust together? I, I don't have good answers um, and it's yeah so it's one of it's the end of your software build process and then the delivery to the user might be different signature mechanisms um, there all, may also be different keys and different thoughts um, use automated build, signatures and build versus delivery might be a manual process maybe it's not what is the meaningfulness of automated um, release signatures I don't know that's my pile of thought my pile of thoughts that's I think we're really good thinking right there. So we're assigning you to this section. Right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have lots of problems with it. I don't have a solution for that. I don't know how to hook notary in. Yeah, I think I have a couple actually. ideas here about the um, kind of like where you can, how you can fit in, like you kind of combine different pieces of metadata to, to discuss it. I'd, I'd be happy to write down some thoughts. I don't know if I could finalize them, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, so so in the past, uh, uh, on this uh, on this section as well, I, I had communicated this thing before as well somewhere that first we need to identify what different software artifacts we are talking about, right? Because mm -hmm. S-bombs are one, manifests are there, there are executables. Now, now the, the, the landscape is very big, right? And many of the things are in enterprise today. They work for people. They do this thing day in and day out, right? And then some things are exploratory, like in Toto or something like that, right? Uh, they are exploratory in a sense because they are not prevalent in the enterprise, right? So we need to identify that, okay, what kind of sort uh, assigning artifacts we are talking about, right? And then base, once we have identified those artifacts, then based on each of them, we can kind of give recommendation that, okay, this is the way we sign, okay? Or this is something that you should do or look into it, right? Uh, because, because right now, 
I, I think signing of sort of software artifacts it's in itself could would be a very giant white paper right because there there are so many techniques out there there are so many interfaces out there there are csps ksps pkc s11 then there are gpg signing in toto is there notary is there so i think ident- identification of artifacts should be the first step and then the next step should be okay based on each of those artifacts this is what you do today right uh, and um, and that could be one of the i mean this is how we fill out this section eventually i mean i don't Wait, know so you, you already have you also have opinions so you can help us fill that in too your yes. i think that was a request i i just heard three folks volunteer to put down some of their thoughts for this section and do not <laughs> worry about whether or not they are cohesive or comprehensive we can always tackle that later sometimes the hardest part is getting the art on the canvas and then we can fix it later yeah okay and i'm familiar with some previous work uh on this and i'll contribute, but I think one of the things that I've seen uh, some folks do is they uh, create like a Merkle tree of all the um, signatures. So yeah. I, I do have one question that kind of triggered in my mind as we were having the software artifact discussion is I have not seen anywhere in the document an explanation of the components of the supply chain as they relate specifically to software. You mean and- Emily? So we've talked a little bit around um, the code itself that's being written, whether or not you're a raw supplier, um, a producer, or a consumer. Um, We've talked about the source code. We've talked about the build itself and the pipelines. We're Mm -hmm. kind of going to talk about the distribution of that um, and the verification of all of those things, but we don't actually have those components described, um, which I think is important, especially when we, when we need to identify what software artifacts we're talking about so yes. that we can illustrate to the reader who may not be familiar with these concepts or at least has not been introduced to thinking about it in this abstract manner, that this software artifact comes out of this particular component of a supply chain. Yeah. Prior to release, I think um, adding at least an extremely simplified flowchart pipeline diagram might be meaningful at the beginning. Um, yeah, because it would identify the, the stages, who, the identities of people at each stage with the names you mentioned, and uh, what artifacts or what, what stuff is at each stage, inputs or outputs. Um, yeah, which basically it's what are the inputs, one or more intermediate and an output, like an extremely simple pipeline, like not, but just showing that the existence of those things. Yeah. With the, if you saw that paper deliver uncompromised, um, there's a, there is a diagram in there, I believe that that's pretty close that shows like the attestation steps. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yes and no. Uh, mostly like all, all these, na- all these things we keep talking about are, are glossary, if you will, just something that includes the same exact names we're going to use throughout the paper. Um, and introduces them in a diagram. Yes, we probably could copy a diagram. I haven't seen the diagram you mentioned, but we probably could copy it for reference, but just making sure it matches the terminology we're gonna use with the rest of it. Yeah, it just yeah, introduces yeah, right. the, like a really super high level architecture yeah. before yeah. the architecture diagram, right? To introduce yeah. the concepts, that makes sense. Maybe would... an architecture diagram is good enough too, but it's usually gonna get more detailed. Yeah. yeah. I would caution against copying something from another source if you don't know necessarily what the licensing or copyright restrictions yes. associated with those images are. If we well, have that's not one, what Cole meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. I, I, I just want to make sure. I, I um, meant the, the steps. Yeah, no, I just want to make sure that we're all clear. Um, but if there is something that we could potentially use as a reference to create from or at least use as a starting point um that would be beneficial if somebody were to link it another thought that elicited would be really need to beyond a reference architecture to provide a reference environment and give configuration files to stand something up i know we talked with andrew martin to do something possibly supply chain-ish for 
capture the, the flag for a security day, uh, maybe we can tap into those folks. But if someone is, is feeling eager to like write some code or do some configs, it would be, it would be like a great, we can say it's out of scope for now and make it a, a stretch goal. But if we can, if we can go beyond like a reference POC for this, it would go a long ways because it's easier to demonstrate and have a playground for people rather than a bunch of words in a document. So not just the, the reference implementation, but literally a, an environment someone can go and touch, feel, implement, deploy, hosted. Yeah, what do you think about that? We have, uh, there's an open source training platform called Hobby Farm that Rancher and Boxboat have been collaborating on uh, that might work well for something like that. It's um, We can host it at like on GKE or AWS, but we, we don't have the money to host it, obviously. Yeah, I don't know if we want necessarily want to like host it and have it online, but at least give people the configuration files um, to bring it up in their own account. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that would be good. If there's existing configuration already, I definitely reference it. Um, but um, I think we've mentioned this early on when this working group was starting. What was the scope of it? Uh, I think we said also like that we'd like to say and uh, provide a, a functioning usable reference implementation. But I think yeah. we're starting with this paper. So I think it's, it's creeping out of scope. I don't know. That's a, that's not, I'm not leading this. <laughs> it is. So I, that was actually something that I had also learned was that some of the content of the paper appears to be more expansive into a reference implementation area. And if you're doing a review and you you feel that particular section that you're looking at has more reference implementation specific information, highlight it and tag it as reference implementation. That way, when we start massaging and cleaning up the content, we can extract those into a separate document to revisit after the paper is complete. Makes sense. Just on that environment thing, because I'm trying to figure out, because the differences between that and the, the actual reference implementation, because the expectation would be that that reference implementation is literally press, well, it would be great, press a button, we instantiate the whole shoot and match, and now you can start building out your code. So it'd have the configuration, the, the environment with it, um, everything that someone would need to be able to instantiate this thing. That's kind of where I think we were going initially with that reference implementation. I mean, it's a long way off, right? We haven't even got to the architecture, but but I'm trying to see the difference between, because you know it would be like the, the almost the press the button terraform and it builds the whole lot for you. That's what I think. Mean. John, John, for for something like that, if we just go back, I think to what I think was an earlier comment as well. Um, we would need to make sure that the artifacts are clearly defined and the any translation between the artifacts across the supply chain and stuff. But bang on, if we end up with a software factory on this, uh, it's golden. Yeah. I'll pass. I, I had problem hearing what you were saying. You sound very far away from the microphone. Oh, sorry about that. Can, is that any better at all? Check, check. Can Slightly. So we've better? got about, yes, sorry. much That's better. better. Okay, sorry about that. Looks like Zoom just reset something for me here. But um, no, I was just going to say that uh, I think that the conversation is spot on. If we just tie in what was stated earlier, if we can work on the artifacts themselves and then look at the integration of these artifacts and possibly translations. Um, and then the sort of click button software factory model, which starts to talk about a software supply chain that we can instantiate becomes a starting point for people to, to go in and they can kind of configure it for their environments. But th th so there's some really interesting work that's being discussed here. Um, if we systematically take it from the, the, the concept of, first of all, just to highlight sort of the areas that we're looking at in this document, then let's get down to the artifacts. Let's look at the integration of these artifacts. And so we've got a common nomenclature and the metadata surrounding it. And now we can get into a rough arc, rough implementations in a factory. Yeah. So we've got about eight minutes left and we have one more section that needs assignment. Validation of signatures at deployment and runtime. Who's excited about this? I think this relates a lot to the, the previous two sections, because however we create the signatures, I think is a huge piece of how we deploy them. So, yeah. Good. Thank yeah. you. Congratulations. <laughs> just... 
Yeah, there's there's a point that that's that's pretty tied in. So if, if like it will be largely informed by the the previous sections. But Altas, you were the last one on the microphone. I don't know that you've yet been assigned to anything. If you could jump in there, that would be great. Yeah, so I'm, I'm fairly new to this. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is just go through and do like a, a review of the doc itself, but happy, more than happy to contribute. Amazing. Gary, what about you? I'm happy to contribute. I'm just trying to get my bearings on where things are at uh, with the paper. Um, I know a few of us at VMware are thinking about uh, a widespread of different parts uh, in this paper. So I'm happy to work with uh, folks on where we're needed. Fantastic. Would it, would it be cool with you if we pencil you to start off in the section or you wanna take more of like fine tooth comp, start to finish? bottom to top, form more ideas, get a feel for how folks are working or yeah, I think, mind, like fitting some questions and content here, possibly. Uh, I was thinking the image um, artifact signing portion, mostly because um, uh, uh, the, the team that I'm mostly working with are kind of thinking about that space pretty closely. So I think that might be a good job enough for it. Fantastic. Is there anyone on the call that would like to work on something and hasn't yet been assigned. Okay. So if you have not yet been assigned and you're just going through and reviewing, we would like you to become a contributor to the paper. Please feel free to assign yourself a section or just start jotting down some of your notes or thoughts and opinions that you have on a particular area. Um, oftentimes, once somebody sees something written down, it jogs their memory to add on to it and expand it. And then sooner or later, you take a paper that's 20 pages and turn it into 41. So. Um, Please remember to self-assign using the instructions that are found at the top of the document. I do have a question associated with timeline. So originally we were targeting this for a KubeCon cloud native security uh, release for Europe, which is May, beginning of May. And it usually takes about a month to get through the community review and adjudication portion of that. So that brings us to beginning of April. So we really need to have draft content with our initial passive review sometime in mid-March. Does that seem achievable based off of everybody's existing priorities, schedules, and other commitments? I got to think that's achievable. We, we, we've still got like four weeks or so to, to really crack on, right? I think we've got a lot of tech content in here already. There's, there's some of the areas we've picked out there that we can add on to it. Um, four weeks that I've, I thought would be in decent shape. But it would mean, you know, we'd spend a week doing that review, maybe two. So we, we really do have to, I guess, start implementing some of these content areas. So I do feel we positive. Wanna... <laughs> Good. Do we want to shoot for next Friday to have some level of content in every one of the sections? That sounds good to me. Yeah, I can we... certainly make that commitment for my section. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even the sections we were still a bit light on, right? If people can just cry for help in the in the the. Um in the, the Slack channel, we can dive in and assist, right? Yeah, that's a great point. If you feel you've hit a wall, be it writer's block, or, or you don't know something, just raise your hand in the Slack channel for others to jump in and, and discuss that with you to see if you can progress. Or if you're ready to tap out and move into something else, uh, we, can, we can discuss that as well. But if, if you feel you're not making progress, like do let us know because we we want to we want we do want to try to get content for all the sections. So if you know you're not making any progress, do let us know so we can shuffle things around and get someone else there and, and try to make progress. Cool. 
I think it's good. All right, good stuff. Well, I think we've covered a lot today. Um, <laughs> let's see how people uh, contributing to it and uh, uh, schedules and everything. Uh, and um, let's get to it, right? I think a lot of people, well, certainly a couple of people I know on, on the call are going to be doing quite a bit of work over the weekend. So uh, you know, if people want to catch up independently and maybe jump on a call to discuss stuff, I think that's also fair game. Uh, and if you have thoughts that are better illustrated than put in words, uh, draw it on a paper, take a picture. Uh, both myself and Emily like drawing, like illustrating things. So if, if you give us a sketch, we'll turn it into a diagram for you and include it in there. The question I have is, uh, do we have any maximum number of pages? Like uh, how much details we have to put in each section, right? Like we, we can be, be, you know, we can explain it in very detail, but um, if each and every section is going to explain everything in detail, the overall paper size would be, uh, yeah, it will be too much. So do, do we have any thoughts on that? How, how much depth we have to go in each section? Or, uh, I think some of that, um, if you do get really detailed or into the weeds, I think we can do a review and determine whether or not it's it's too intense for that particular section or needs to be pulled out into a reference implementation for further explanation. Um, we can do that as part of the review. Oftentimes what will end up happening is when we do that first draft content pass, it's not going to be consistent at the level of depth. And we might find some areas that need to go a little bit deeper and other areas that need to be raised up. But it's always better to have some of that information information so that we can make more informed decisions when we're doing those reviews. Thanks, Emily. Cool. Makes sense. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. I think that's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.